Well, welcome. It must be Monday, Monday because we are live. Hey everyone, I am so sorry if you were like waiting beforehand. I am not real good at pushing the buttons on this thing. <laughs> and I pushed some wrong buttons. <laughs> so. We sell stuff, we're not button pushers. And Jordan is also with me today. She is gonna be monitoring the chat. So I'm not like poking you in the face as I'm scrolling here too. Got this whole high tech situation going. Oh, by the way, welcome. If it's your first time, I'm Danny, the niche lady. Welcome. We do this every Monday live at one o'clock and we have a live. You're covered up now, Jeff. I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> your, cool. your face is I don't just... like looking at my face anyway, <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> I am here with my friend and co-author of the Proven eBay course, Jeffrey Clark. What up? Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so Norton is going to monitor those comments. So as we go along, if you have questions and things, we're going to try to get to them. She's going to like throw them at us. Jeff, would you mind? I really just want to share your cell phone story. Can do we? Do it. Can yes. we do that? Okay. Please do. Okay, you guys, because I, I, I'm sure it'll make many of you feel better because we all do <laughs> stupid things. Right. So here's here's Jeff's cell phone case cover. You can see. <laughs> see all the cracks. It's, and it's it, kind of destroyed. It's destroyed. Please yeah, it's do kind of share destroyed. the story. Well, sure. So I carry my cell phone in my pocket, right? And um, as a way of serving my community, I work as a crossing guard for the local school. Oh, what a what a more tender thing! You know, all the little kids going under my stop sign, right? So one of the tools they give me is this nightstick flashlight for when it's foggy out. I can, you know, uh, give a little extra light there. So I'm standing there waiting for kids holding this nightstick flashlight. And I'm a musician, you know. So I got a song going in my head like this. Beating out a rhythm on my leg. Right? <laughs> the pocket. Where the cell phone is. <laughs> and when I'm done, I'm like... Oh, crap. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> he beat up his own phone. I beat up my own phone. I just love that. It's great. <laughs> I could so see myself doing something like that. <laughs> All right, so everyone, how is your, how is your Monday going? How is your weekend? What good things did you find? Let's talk about eBay. This is pretty much open source. Ask your eBay questions. Now, Jeff sells mostly, what would you say, like media, records, yeah. electronics, yeah. weird stuff. Oh, definitely weird stuff. All the stuff, stuff I don't sell. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's really funny, you know. Um, the, man, the um, niches that we find, you, you know, it, they can be so different. Like, I, Dan and I both will do kitchen stuff, but she yeah. goes for the glass mm -hmm. and I go for like the appliances and the aluminum. And she's like, aluminum, why do you want to sell aluminum? I'm like, well, because it's fun. <laughs> it's not fun to me. That's why I don't sell it. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I see some people are still making their way over from the other live that I created that I don't even know. What <laughs> Is it still there? Is it still showing up? I don't know either, but okay. I, I, think I it might be actually. Is this it? Oh, or is this one yeah, that's one? not where we're, you're in the wrong yeah, one. Yeah, that's not the oh, right one. I, I don't even know why that one's <laughs> old. And I can't go in. Yeah, and so end we're it we're not really techies, okay? But maybe maybe you can go in and end that one. Can you go find it? Yeah, and end it. She's working on it. Jordan's on it. This is why you need help, because <laughs> we all have deficits. I mean, it's right. just. It's just a fact. And right. there are people out there who don't have that deficit that you can build off of. Right. Okay. I saw yeah. one question that I can answer right away. Is there an good, easy good. way to grade your LPs? Yeah, you can you can uh, look up the gold mine grading system and it's very detailed about uh, grading albums. Um, I don't go into quite that much detail. I've kind of developed my own, but then you know, I sell five figures a year in, in albums, so I've kind of developed my own system. It's a little easier, but Goldmine is a great place to start. And I love, I love that comment. She says, holy moly, lady, we're all treasure hunters, so we found you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think Jordan's going over. You have to go in to manage my videos. Don't tell me how to live my life. Hey, and she's getting sassy with me now. She found it. She's getting sassy with it. She's tired because... Well, see, we got in, uh, we literally got here at like 3 a.m. in the morning because of a delayed flight, but 
Jordan had been flying since seven o'clock that morning, so because she had to get to Vegas, and then from Vegas we we came out to Tampa. So wow. we are actually here. I should tell you guys what the Proven Conference is. So the Proven Conference is for e-commerce sellers, a lot of Amazon people here, and it is put on by Jim Cockrum, who runs the My Silent Team community. Um, they have a huge Facebook group. Mm -hmm. If you want to be involved with a very positive focus, in fact, let me just say, if you like the Niche to Profit on eBay, Etsy, and more group, Jim is my mentor. Jim is the person that I look at as how a leader should run a group. Absolutely. So. His group is that same model of positivity and focus on problem solving and no funny stuff going on in it and all right. of that. So he has that group. Was it, how many people are in that group now? Oh, there's like, like 60 some thousand. Like 60, yeah. Thousand and like people. Danny, I mean, I modeled my group after Jim because I love yeah. the way, you know, that he runs it. Uh, it is, it's super positive. It's never pushy. It's never, hey, you have to buy our thing. You have to buy our thing. No, it's just, how can we serve you? How can we help you? And tell them what your it. group is. Oh, my group is the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Sorcerer spelled S-O-U-R-C-E-R, because -E like we're going out sourcing. You know, if you put in the other, if you put in Sorcerer, you're going to get Mickey Mouse with the get brooms. Mickey Mouse. And that's yeah. not cool. That's not me. I'm I mean, you kind of get Mickey Mouse. Well, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, you know. <laughs> I'm more like goofy. I'm more goofy. <laughs> right. So yeah, the Proven Conference here, it's amazing. And like Danny said, it's very heavy Amazon, but you know, they're open to all kinds of e-commerce. There are people here teaching Walmart, uh, teaching whatever. And uh, Danny and I wrote the Proven eBay course for uh, this community. And um, we're given two presentations. We gave one today, we're giving another one tomorrow. So we are the resident eBay experts eBay. here at the Proven Conference. Yeah. Yeah, and cool. I will be thrifting while I'm out here. <laughs> I mean, come on, you cannot go someplace new right? and not go check out the thrift stores. Heck so yeah. some of you might already know that I am meeting up with uh, Alex and Aaron from Chapter 2 Vintage Co., which I'm super excited about. So it's probably going to be stuff on both of our channels from that thrifting trip, and it'll come out next week. <laughs> i got to get home and edit. <laughs> but, all right, let's let's have your questions. This is just like open discussion. You've got someone who sells electronics and books and records and yep. all that stuff. kind of stuff. Heck yeah. TVs. He oh, sells big, TVs. Big, heavy TVs. Mm -hmm. I love it. So bring some shipping questions even. Right. What do yeah. you got? You got any questions coming through? She's just looking at She's me. No. <laughs> we're going to let her type. They don't type as fast as you think, okay? So you just got to. Okay. You know. Oh, okay, so I just cool. have to be. Oh, that's right. Because you're hearing me say it before they're actually hearing yeah. me say it. Oh, that's right, true. I forget right. about okay. that lag and all that good stuff. So I see some. I Oh, okay. So Bree, thank you for posting a link to the group. If somebody could go oh, grab the link for Jeff's group as well, that would be fantastic. What is your best shipping tip? Ooh, best shipping tip. Okay, well, um, my first shipping tip is if you're shipping anything big and heavy, man, I like to use calculated shipping because I don't like getting hosed with shipping charges. So, you know, Danny's in oh, Vegas. I I'm, live not in... A, I'm not a free shipping person, Yeah, so... yeah, my gosh, no. that's my best shipping tip right yeah. there. Don't, because, you know, I live in Northern Indiana and if I'm shipping to Chicago, that's great. It's nice and cheap. But if I ship to San Diego or if I ship to Danny in Las Vegas, yeah, I'm paying through the nose, right? So I want I want the buyer to to cover that. Yeah. So I saw a question too. Is like, uh, so we, this presentation we did, we did like this top ten reasons people are either not selling on eBay or holding back from selling on eBay. And shipping is one of the biggies. You mm -hmm. guys know it's. I mean, we get the questions all the time. It's why I created an entire playlist of get ship done because shipping is such a big deal. And the big heavy stuff is scary. But let me tell you something. The big heavy stuff is scary, which means lots of sellers are staying away from it. Oh, heck yeah. So it's a place you can kind of swoop in and overcome that fear that others won't. Right. And ship that big stuff. Right. So talk about the kinds of TVs that sell. Because it's a, it's, there's a trend for a certain type of TV sure. that people are looking for. Sure. So the ones I like to find are the big CRT TVs. CRT is cathode ray tube, and that's before they started making the plasma TVs, which are your flat screens, okay? 
Um, and you can go to practically any garage sale or thrift store or estate sale or whatever, and you can find those big cathode ray tubes selling for whatever, two bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks max. Okay? They just want to get rid of them. Because nobody wants them. They're boat anchors, right? They're, they weigh 30, 40, 50 pounds. Nobody wants those, right? Well, yeah, people do want them. You know who wants them? Is vintage gamers, okay? People who do retro gaming, the old uh, graphics were designed for the cathode ray tubes. And when you put them on a plasma screen, they just don't display the same way. So the gamers love those old vintage uh, CRT TVs. So I pick them up for two bucks. I just showed one on the screen that I paid five bucks for it. It sold within a day for 137 plus shipping. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, since I'm marketing to gamers, I want, I, I'm go marketing to the gamer community. So I put gaming in the title, you know, I put Mario Kart up on the screen and uh, man, those things sell so great. And, and so then let's get back to the shipping part of that. So we're talking a pretty good size Absolutely. thing and it's going to be in an oversized box because right. anything that's over those 12 cubic inches, mm -hmm. is going to be oversized. Mm -hmm. So how do you ship something like that? Right. So my process for shipping TV or actually anything, you know, I, I sell stereo equipment too, which can be heavy. Um, VCRs. VCRs. sell VC a lot of VCRs. Oh my gosh. So with big, heavy things like that, um, what I do with the TVs is I'll wrap it with just thin bubble several times, all directions, okay? Then I'll get those uh, foam pool noodles, which you can pick up at Dollar General for a buck. They know about right? pool noodles. Yeah. We use them on artwork. Oh, there you yeah. go. It's perfect, right? I get the pool noodles, I slice them in half, and you can either tape it on the corners of the TV, make a little you know foam box out of it, or you can just tape like a couple on each side. But that makes the perfect packaging. And those huge, huge 19-inch TVs, they fit with the pool noodles on them. They fit almost perfectly in a Home Depot uh, heavy-duty extra-large box. Which, you know, the box will cost you five bucks, but when you're selling TV for 150 that you, that you bought for five, what's another five in shipping? Who cares? Yeah, and people, <laughs> like, don't be afraid that there's an enormous amount of shipping on stuff like that because people are factoring that in. Oh, sure they are. When they're buying this stuff. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, and, and when you pay two bucks for something, you have a lot of margin to play with to price it knowing that people have the big shipping amount. That's why you guys see in my videos, when I'm passing a large item by, it's not that it wouldn't sell. It's that it won't sell for enough to offset what they have to pay in shipping right. along with the cost of shipping. So that shipping then takes out of my margin, sure. the, makes it not worth it. Yeah, the key there really is how rare and weird is the item. So another heavy thing I sell is typewriters, okay? Um, vintage typewriters can be super common, like the little, you know, Corona electrics. There's a bazillion of those out there, but you get like, uh, right now I have um, an, uh, a 1965 German made typewriter that's listed for 300 bucks. Okay. And the reason I listed it for 300 bucks is because I sold exact one, exact one like this for 300 bucks a few years ago. Yeah, there you go. Right. So the rarer and weirder it is, the less people care about the shipping cost, right. honestly. So if I'm offering free shipping on something, it's gonna be a commodity item, okay? Oh, here's some cans of WD-40 that I got on clearance and I'm listing on eBay. Yeah, I'm doing free shipping because you can get WD-40 anywhere, right? But a rare, weird, old German typewriter, heck yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> list it for a butt ton of money plus shipping because people do not care about the shipping. Can I add a uh, marketing note in there? Oh, oh do it! Comes. Jordan's coming in. <laughs> Jordan's Come on in. Order. So there is a wide variety of shipping scams out there now. So people actually see free shipping and go, okay, what's the what's the catch? Because you oh. can't return when you return something and you get the item for free, but they charge all of it in the shipping cost. You can't actually return that item anymore. So the general consensus right now about free shipping is kind of shifting away from it because people are like, hey, what's the catch? So paying for shipping is now like, a, oh, okay, I know the transparency of my fees. And you're Heck yes, it's the honesty. You need a fist bump. Come on. I hadn't even thought of that. Wow. I knew there was a trend away from right, using but that explains free shipping, it. but Dang, that's, that's awesome. good. That's, that's good. That's awesome stuff right there. We can learn from these youngsters. Cool. <laughs> All right. See, what happens when I'm live from my phone versus my computer 
is your comment comes up and then it fades away. So I'm like, <laughs> wow. And by the time my eyes focus, I'm like, wait, 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 where'd it go? And okay. the only way I can get it back is to poke you. So here's a good question. Should okay. we price the item less because the shipping is high? Oh, should we oh, price the question. item less because the shipping is high? No, you should price the item where the market will hold. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do your research, see what it has sold for before and match that. You yeah. Know, because most buyers are only looking at the price. And if they want it, if they're going to pay 300 bucks for a typewriter, they're not even looking at the shipping. They don't, they don't really care. And here's the thing, too. You don't know where your buyer is at. So it may be high for the person that's across the country. Right. But it may only be 10 bucks for the person who lives in the same city. So price your item where you price your item. Yep. You can always adjust prices down. You can do markdown sales. You can send offers. You can take offers. You can put out a coupon. You can never go back up once you've come down and sold it. Right. I mean, you can reprice, you know, up. But if you sell it too cheap, you can't go back. You're done. You've sold it. You might have left money on the table. So, yeah, price accordingly. Good. Let's see. What else we got? Well, that was all of our shipping questions. We kind of covered all of them <laughs> with all of the answers. Oh, nice. let me, let me okay. just say, too, because sometimes I take this stuff for granted that just everybody just automatically knows this. When you're using calculated shipping and you're setting up your listing, what you want to do is take the dimensions of the item and add to it at least... I don't know. I say, well, depends two, on the item. I say two to three inches around sure. my breakables. Is it yep. kind of the same rule of thumb for a TV or a VCR? Oh, yeah, sure. Or do you add a little more? Sure. Even? Well, and it's easy for the TVs because I know I'm using that big heavy-duty box. You know what the box so is. So I know what the box dimensions are. Okay. But yeah, if it's a weird-shaped item, I will add a small item. I might only add an inch each way, but a larger item, I will definitely add two inches each way for yeah. extra padding. Like breakable item, for sure. I yeah. know I'm going to wrap it really, really well, put the pool noodles on it, whatever. That's definitely going to add two inches all around yeah and so you want to put that in as the dimensions because a lot of sellers this is where they go wrong is they don't put in that larger Extra. dimension mm -hmm. and then the customer only pays you know eight bucks for shipping or something they go what happened i told him it weighed you know 26 pounds you know? yeah well it's not just the weight so the but thing exactly is, so yeah. when it gets into that oversized the, the dimensional weight the weight doesn't even really matter right. they are charging because, based on that size yeah because the, the postal service i think it was last year they changed to dimensional weight yeah which means they're not only charging for the 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 poundage but they're also charging for the volume so you can have a five pound item that's this big and it'll cost like a third if it was five pounds but it's you know 18 inches a, a cube yeah you know. Exactly. So just putting that stuff in, and then eBay does the calculations. Yeah, let you them just, do the calculations. You just have to put the measurement and the weight yep. and let eBay do the calculations. And you don't need to worry where it's going. You know, They'll yeah. calculate if it's going next door or across the country. Yeah. It'll be different for each buyer. Yeah. What have we got? Any other? Okay, here's a good question. Okay. Do you look for other people's listings and try to go somewhere in the middle or closest to the highest oh, price? I Those love pricing really questions. That's, that's a good market. question. Yeah, so um, when researching comps, and you see, because I, I get this a lot, there's prices kind of like all over the place. So you got to remember on eBay, you have the person down pricing down here who's like the yard sale seller. Like they just want to get rid of stuff. They're just, or it's a hobby or, or they may have not found the same comps that you have. And then you have the ones like way, way, like we call those optimistic. <laughs> now if you see sold comps and they actually sold for that though then that's not so optimistic that's right. they found the right buyer mm -hmm. and then you have those like well i don't really want to price up there i'm going to be a little more conservative i want to price in the middle so you've got these three genres of mentality around the pricing of an item and on most of this you stuff there's really no set price it's supply and demand sure i tend to price on the high side same because i've got room then i can mm -hmm. send offers that are really aggressive and enticing mm -hmm. i can accept offers that make the buyer feel really good and i have a lot of room to just play with that price sure. and people pay full price like, yeah i'm not pricing it off the charts like you know it's never sold for that i'm looking at like hey this sold for $300, Absolutely. you know, a couple of years ago. Let's mm -hmm. try that again.
Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the only time I may not do that is if I look at, so yeah, I do my research with sold listings, okay? But then if I look at current active listings and there's a whole bunch of active listings and they're kind of lower in price, then I'm not going to go on the high end, right. okay? Because I know my current competition is a lot lower than me. And conversely, I just did this the other day. I had sold listings that went up from like 30 to 50 bucks. But when I looked at active listings, the lowest active listing was like 100. So I'm price of mine at 75 or 80 bucks, okay? Because I know it'll sell for up to 50. But like Danny said, I'm going to price higher. See if I can get some more money out of it. Yeah, it's really retail is all about supply and demand. It is on supply everything. and demand. My favorite yeah. scenario is when there's demand and there's no supply, meaning there's some sold listings and there are zero active listings. Yeah. Then I'm going to find the highest sold price and add 25%. You know what I love better? <laughs> what? I love when there's no sold and there's no active. Oh, I love and that. And there's nothing and I, love I that. get to set the price. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. That's my favorite. It's so many people. And this is one of the things where I'm not a big fan of looking stuff up in the stores because a lot of you will go, well, I can't find it, so I'm going to leave it. And oh, you may have just oh left $1,000 mm -hmm. sitting on the shelf because you couldn't For find sure. it. Like For I would sure. say, go with your gut. If your gut's telling you something's really good, Do it. go with it. Do it. Do you want more marketing insights? Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here comes Jordan again. Marketing She's the mystery guest. And pricing. Do it. So a lot of the times people see when they see a mid range or weird range of pricing, the low range is always going to be um, low Jump. value to them. So they're like, oh, is there something wrong with it? Why is the price oh, so low? There's this mid range up here. So that mid range is actually your sweet spot if there are low ballers because they see that as, okay, I'll look for a little bit higher price within that margin mm -hmm. and then I'm getting better quality. Excellent. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Oh, we got a another shipping question, which this one is actually pretty good. So okay. I sold one item, but the customer brought three of them. Um, okay. They didn't change the size of the box, and I got stuck owing money due to the oversized box. Okay. Could you guys hear her? I, I, let me just double check. If you guys can hear Jordan or, or I need to repeat what she's saying. I don't know how good this microphone is picking up. So give me... You can hear her. Okay, so you okay, heard the good. thing. So someone, okay, so you had somebody buy three of the same item. Three of the same items, but eBay didn't adjust the box size to accommodate those three items. Correct. So here's my first question is, did you have some sort of discounted rate in there for the shipping based on them buying multi-quantity? Multi or did eBay assess a per item charge on the shipping to that customer because that makes a difference because they may have paid you enough to compensate for the oversized box or to ship in two separate packages so you're not going oversized. So it just depends on how you have it set up. See, I have mine when somebody buys multiple items or multiple quantity from me, they're going to get assessed that shipping fee unless they wait for me to send them an invoice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and many people don't wait for that. They just want to pay. So they pay the whole combined shipping, you know, that, that eBay added up for them. And so that gives me the options of the best way to ship it. So did you see, did they answer how they? No. They okay. Not okay. That. So if you could answer that question, that can kind of help us, you know, figure out how to help you a little bit more right. because yeah, eBay is not going to adjust the box size, unfortunately, because I mean, they have they no know what way box to size do that. You're, you're using, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it may behoove you to ship it in two packages. So you mm -hmm. don't, because the oversize is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Oh, it is ridiculous. Yeah. Or maybe you can do like the whole box in a bag thing over on pirate ship. There you go. There's that. You use that? No, you don't use that. You probably should be. I probably should be. <laughs> Do you know about it? A little bit. He says a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all know about the box in the bag cubic rate that Pirate Ship offers. Basically, and we talked we talked a bit about this, I think last week, is if you have like a heavy box and you don't want it, and it's this is not even the oversized stuff so much though. This is this is mostly just heavy stuff. And you put that in a bag. You only get assessed a charge based on two dimensions instead of 
three dimensions. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And That's uh, crazy it's called Box in a Bag, and it's a ridiculous saving. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm checking it out. I'm just saying. Pirateship.com. <laughs> All right, we have another question. Okay. okay. I have 844 listings. I list two to 15 things a day. My sales went from 16 two weeks ago to one sale in the last seven days. What can I do to make sure that there is nothing wrong with my store? Hmm. Mm. I'm hearing this a lot. So I don't know if this is comforting or upsetting, but sales are slow right now. And I can tell you this from just going to the airport, <laughs> people are not in front of their computers. They are not in front of their computers right now. They are, they are out. The country is opening up and they're going on vacation and their minds are not on where they have been when they've been cooped up in their homes for the past year of like, oh, there's nothing better to do. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna shop on eBay and look for stuff. So really this is, an extreme summer. I mean, we always have a summer slowdown, but we're seeing an extreme summer slowdown this year just because of the circumstances of the world. Right. And so it's not that there's probably anything wrong with your store as much as just people are just not shopping. And look at it this way. And this is why, like, it may be a little painful right now but you keep stocking that store. That's a really good listing rate, by the way. Two, what did you say, two to 15? Two to 15 a day? A day. That's, That's fantastic. outstanding. That's fantastic. And in about, oh, let's see where we are. I'm saying in about six to eight weeks, the floodgates will open again. Right. You will have a fantastic fourth quarter because you have stocked your store with a lot of merchandise. So don't take this as a time to slow down. Just keep yeah. up with that listing. Keep getting those listings up there. Yeah, I definitely not slow down. The only thing that you might do is look at your product mix because uh, with people going out, what they're not buying is uh, the commodity stuff. So if you're selling a lot of shoes and clothing, you know, maybe they don't want to sit at home on eBay. They want to go out in the sunshine and hit the clothing stores, you know, hit the, the thrift stores themselves to look for clothes and shoes. So this would be the time, like my own sales, the things that I've seen selling are the really unique, weird stuff. So like today, I sold a book from that was printed in 1981. I sold it for 100 bucks. I just showed it to Danny. Uh, oh, no, pretty not rare, that one. <laughs> pretty rare book. Pretty rare book, okay? Yesterday, I sold uh, a 1970s um, Farberware griddle that I paid two bucks for at an auction. I sold it for 135 yesterday, okay? That's the stuff that's selling for me is the rare stuff, the weird stuff. So, you know, if you've got more rare and weird sitting around, try listing that instead of your commodity items. Yeah. Or if, say, you're a clothing seller, what are people, like, if they are going online, what are they looking for? Oh, they're looking for bathing suits and cover-ups oh, and sundresses yeah. and sun hats and sunglasses and, Jordan, what are you looking for when you're shopping online for clothing? Too much. Um, <laughs> she says too much. <laughs> One second. Type a comment. Okay. Had a girl. Uh, what am I looking for online when I'm? Yeah, like well, you know, you're the you're the millennial shopper. You know, <laughs> come on. Here's our token millennial. To Here's say. the thing, though. The way millennials shop is they see something on Instagram and then they immediately go and try to find that well, thing. Oh wait, go. stop there. Stop. She just gave you a really super key. She just made you a lot of money <laughs> on how to improve your sales. Are you guys on Instagram? Did you know that you can sell directly off of Instagram now mm. and have a store? There you go. There you go. So the millennials, and, I, and I've told you guys this, the millennials are on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's why I resisted Instagram for so long because it, I, I, I don't like hashtags. <laughs> I just don't like hashtags. I don't want to see what you're eating for dinner. You know, that's Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's, see how old I am. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's Facebook. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. I didn't get permission to do this, but Jordan, if anybody were to need help with Instagram, could they perhaps hire your services? They absolutely can. Ah. I do uh, business consulting specifically for small businesses Dude. looking to grow. 
Yeah, and yeah. can offer a range of services from just advice, doing an audit of all of your marketing channels and seeing where the gap in your customer journey is to full-fledged helping you um, get your content up and running and showing you how to do everything. So Love it. yeah, that's what she did for me. And now I kind of can figure out the hashtags and then the, she still thinks I do it wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a lot better though. That's I'm right. getting followers, it's so it's, it's good. <laughs> You're doing better, mom. No, but honestly, you guys, You've got to think outside of just, oh, if I list it on eBay, it'll bring me the right customer. You need to market outside of your own. I mean, I hear, and I hear this all the time. Well, your sales are good because you have a YouTube channel. I was like, no, I have a YouTube channel because my sales were good because I learned how to create a successful eBay business. And I wanted to share that with others. So I didn't have a channel you know, yes. I mean, does the channel help? Uh, absolutely. And if you are good at getting on camera and everything, by all means, you know, have a YouTube channel, but Instagram, Pinterest, Pinterest is another place because people are like doing little image searches on Google. And you know what the number one ones that come up are Pinterest posts. And if that item's for sale, and it's something somebody wants. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, Pinterest is actually categorized as a search engine now. So oh, like all of wow. your keywords that are happening on your photos and everything, people are searching on Pinterest like they're searching on Google. So, nice. So you guys got to think outside of just listing. And this is why, you know, everybody gives me flack about, well, you don't need a store until you're at the point where the fees and blah, it's not about the money. The store is not about the money. It is about your brand. It is about setting up a, a storefront, a place where people can come find you, where Googlers can come find you, where you can set up categories of stuff and, and all of that. So that's the store is like, that's what you market. You don't, you. you don't market product by product by product. You market your niche, you market like the stuff you sell. And then when you post about a product, that's just part of your overall brand. So you guys like expand, especially if right now you're struggling with slow sales, think about, okay, well, where else do I need to be getting in front of people? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I get a lot of repeat customers for records just because that's how I'm branded my store. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think we even answered the question about, so what, <clears throat> what kinds of things are you looking for right now when you oh, are yeah. shopping? Mostly clothes. Cl what kind? But you're not looking for sweaters. Yes, I am. <laughs> She's wearing one right now. Yeah, this is what I like this. Uh, I search by keywords and trending topics. So, like, cottage core is a big one. Um, oh, good. What's that other word? There's more words. Um, cottage core is big right core now. Cottage core is really big right now. Uh, peasant dresses. Wow. Those are really big right now. A lot of the 70s and 80s trends are coming back. So the bright, vibrant colors, cool. um, laces out. You know, everybody always says, clean your closet, get rid of those old clothes. You know, if I hadn't listened to the advice, I'd have some pretty ripping good it. clothes right now. No, you wouldn't because I would have taken them already. But <laughs> that's the point. Wow. Right, 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 right. Very good. Um, how do you put stuff up on Instagram though? Ooh. How do you post on Instagram? So there See are that, that like we need points. to have a whole nother a, Yeah. A, that's a whole <laughs> nother show. But wow. flat lays, flat lays where you lay the product out and just take a picture of it. Your face does not do need to be anywhere in front of your business. It can just be your products. But uh, actually going back to what you said really fast, this is another big marketing insight right now of how the consumers are changing is building the community within your brand. Mm -hmm. Um people are more likely to be loyal to the people that they trust and right. there's distrust in the big businesses so like target is doing this really good trader joe's is doing this really good they make a community out of their shoppers and it's yeah. no longer the experience of shopping at target it's being a part of that community i have an identity right a I starbucks saw like is that oh yeah that's oh, the whole good. starbucks thing yeah, yeah. For, real. for real i saw a quest that said what did she say was out i believe she said lace was lace. out lace okay. is out Crochet is kind of in. Okay. I, I okay. Had to, I had to double check for a minute. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> You're fine. Then there was another question. What exactly is cottage core? Mm. Uh, cottage core I is essentially uh, you living in a little hut, you're, you know, in the garden of Ireland off the, you know, you take your picnic basket out. It's not little house on the prairie. It's not, it's not. That is peasant dress. Oh, cottage okay. core is different. Keep up. 
I'm trying. And picking flowers <laughs> and um, corsets are actually making a big comeback. Wow. Corsets on top of your outfit. So like hmm. under bust corsets in a dress to give it some shape. Hmm. Um, don't question it. It's just it just sounds incredibly <laughs> uncomfortable. It's all like the 90s, what are you kids thinking? <laughs> all of the '90s trends are back in full storm. Wow, which is kind of tragic, wow. but it is tragic. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> '80s '90s style was not that great. great. <laughs> I'm wow. just saying. That's fun. It's so funny how things cycle back around, though. That is it funny. really is. And that explains why I just sold an 80s hairstyle book last week on eBay. There you go. With the big, you know, curls everywhere. Yeah. And I do feel like, also going back to your point of the uh, video game as your target market, mm -hmm. the millennials are looking, like, everyone's kind of looking for that comfort thing that they had mm -hmm. as a child. So it's an emotional purchase, especially That's after good. being cooped up for so long. They're looking for activities that they can do now with their friends that remind them of their childhood that gave them that comfort before that's any good. of this happened. Yeah. So. Yep. That's really good. Yep. Yeah. You good know, stuff. shopping is emotional. And if you guys can remember that, even when you're outsourcing, and we talked about this this morning, shopping is a very emotional thing, unless it's like, you know, oh, I'm I'm out of toothpaste, you know. And yeah. even then, there's a little emotion in that. You're like, <laughs> ah, I can't brush my teeth. Okay. It, there's, there's almost like an anxiety fear thing there. But when it comes to things you don't need, it's pure emotion. It's you get a warm, fuzzy feeling. You get a, a, a sentimental feeling. You get a like, oh, this is fun. This is joy. You know, but there's there's a feeling behind mm -hmm. like why somebody wants to push that button and buy that thing and, and collect what they collect because right. it. It fills an emotional need. Right. One of my best-selling items I sell on both Amazon and eBay is a candy. That's it, it just a little private candy that's made in my small town. Okay, and uh, people, you know, they travel away and they're like, "Oh, my grandmother used to have these when I was a little kid." I make there probably two to three thousand dollars a month just on that candy. On that candy. Right. Because it reminds which, somebody of grandma. If mm -hmm. anybody knows how to make candied raisins, please let me know. Candy oh, raisins. Candy mm. raisins were based out of Wisconsin, and you're, I have not thought about those in like forever. Oh, now see, on like a monthly basis. oh my god, this is how it works yeah. right here. <laughs> see, because you're price, having the emotion. Because <laughs> price wouldn't even be the factor. No. It would be like, Absolutely. find me that candy I had as right. a kid. That's like they changed the company. Like you can still find the candy raisins, but they're not the same. Mm -hmm. It's not the same formula. Mm -hmm. They don't taste the same. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten all about those. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Oh, so Julia's got a Christmas in July like sale concept. happening right after this. Go check out Perfecting Pearls. Awesome. No, they were not chocolate covered raisins. They are called they're called candy raisins. But they're not they're like a hard... But they're not a raisin. They're a little they're like a almost orangey hard. tan color in like a they don't even they look like a gumdrop almost. Hmm. Yeah. And they had like I there's a certain flavor they had like in a them. Hard candy shell? No, right? they're kind of like those rubbery almost like dots, but not. Oh, wow. I know. It's like, <laughs> oh, here we go. Hmm. <laughs> raisins are gross. Raisins are gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like raisins. I like raisins. I like raisins. All right. Bring us another question. I'm what do we got? What, what do we got? Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Hey. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? What time 28 till 5. Oh, good. We're, we're doing good. We're, we're doing, doing good. good. All right. Where's those questions? Otherwise, we're just going to have dead air. Dead air. Do, 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 do. You don't want her to fill the dead air. Oh, we can fill the dead air. We can fill it. That's not a problem. Uh, would you recommend buying out of your niche if you know it's valuable, but you don't like it? All right, so let's go. I do that's occasionally go out, uh, like, I mean, you guys see me. Like, I pass up all the buys, like, oh, I just don't even want to deal with that. If something's going to make me uh, 500 to $1,000, I'm going to deal with it. Oh, well, heck yeah. You know, so yeah, there are those over. those cases. You <laughs> can make yourself a... But here's the thing, too, you got to realize, are you going to get that price if it's not generally the customer you attract? So is it something that people are actively seeking, that they're going to find it no matter what? 
Or are you looking at somebody else's YouTube channel or somebody else's eBay and going like, oh, well, they can sell that. I can get that. You may only be able to get 200 for it. So there are always those nuances and just make sure, make sure it doesn't come home and go into your death pile. Right. See, that's the, that's what happens when we buy this stuff that we don't like or that is, I see that look you're giving me right now. You just turn away, young lady. <laughs> Chris wouldn't preach what? Wow. I, I, it's different. I'll get back to that in a second. It's different. <laughs> well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll address that. No, but they're like, you see me, dishes, plates. If I buy those, it is the last thing that I'm going to grab to list because I don't like them. And what she's referring to is the fact that I am a little overwhelmed with stuff right now. But I can tell you what, when I reorganize my room and start grabbing stuff to work on, I get excited again. I get excited about the stuff. I don't keep anything that, that's the stuff that I have no problem going, you know what, I don't even know why I bought that. I'm donating that over to dog junkies, you know. And they get some really good stuff from me because I know I'm never going to deal with it. I'm like, I don't even know why I bought that. Um, that's a really good point right there. You know, if you're looking at your, your well, I don't call it a death pile anymore. It's a profit, it a profit pile. pile. It's a profit okay? pile. It's a profit pile. Uh, but if you look at it and there's something there that's just bothering you, that's been there for, you know, two years now, and you keep looking at it, you keep thinking, I have, should list that, I should list that, I should list that. And all it is now is a tool for you to beat yourself up, okay? You're if, shooting on yourself. You are. You're shooting on yourself. Stop <laughs> shooting, okay? If you, <laughs> if you have something like that, get rid of it. Yeah. Okay? Your peace of mind is worth the... 20 bucks profit you would have made off of it or 50 bucks or whatever. And don't beat yourself up Do because not. you were like, oh my up. gosh, but go I, find, you know, yeah, I go spent find something 20 bucks and now it doesn't I've matter. get rid of it. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Go find something yeah. else you can spend 20 bucks on that's going to bring you joy and a $50 bill in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Right? And if you're buying more than is going out the door, then we can have another conversation well, that's a different because conversation. I'm a little guilty right. of that right now. The original question, though, was buying outside of your niche. Yeah. I will buy outside of my niche sometimes. Um, I kind of go with my gut. Like if I'm in an estate sale and something catches my eye and I think, man, I don't do glassware. But that really looks kind of weird, kind of cool. You know, I mean, if it catches my the eye. The blasphemy. I know, right? This, <laughs> this is why we partnered up because we're like polar opposites, right? So, but if, you know, if that catches my eye and I, I kind of linger on it, I might buy it just to try it out, you know, see if I can make some money on it. If I don't, it's going in the donate pile. Big deal. Do you tend to find that too? Like you'll pass something and something will just nag you yes. to go back and you're like, oh man. Yes. I'm going up to the checkout and I'm like, I'm sorry. I have to go back to the back room and pick up that, that stupid thing. Cause it's there. just, it just, you know I can't you're get it out of my mind. If you don't. Right. Yeah. Right. I can't get yeah. it out of my mind. So I'll do that sometimes, but honestly, Honestly, I just file, follow my gut. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Listen to your gut. Your gut is very strong at telling you, and I think a lot of you are ignoring that. Yeah. Because because yeah, you because... heard something somewhere. You're like, and right. this is what it's all good to get information from me, from others, you know, wherever mm -hmm. you're getting it from. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to trust you. You have to live as if, what if tomorrow I was cut off from all information? I've got to trust my own instincts. Right. And that's what I want you to develop is that you can go into a store and just trust you. Right. Yeah. And you can get into the mindset of, oh, I'm at this estate sale. I have to find every possible dollar of profit here. Jeff t sells TVs. I have to look at the TVs. No, you don't have to look at the TVs. Okay. You're not there to squeeze every dollar of profit out of the estate sale. I you don't are look there. At the TVs. Okay, see, you are there to serve your business. Yeah. Okay. You are there to improve your business. And if your business is jewelry, then ignore the stupid TVs and go over to the jewelry table, right? Because I'm the guy that's going to ignore the jewelry table and go to the TVs because that's my niche. Yeah. And if right? your whole store is full of jewelry and you throw a TV in there, your customers are going to be going, <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> what? It, ju it jumps up. Okay. Imagine this. Imagine this. Can you imagine going into Tiffany's? And they all of a sudden decided they're going to throw some dollar store stuff on a shelf. <laughs> like, what would you think of Tiffany's? You go, uh, something's different. Something's changing here. We may not want to shop here anymore. 
that just dragged down the you know the whole value of everything else they sold so be careful with your brand with that be careful with what you sell and don't go for the shiny object just because it's a shiny object yep, yep. should we talk about uh your ideal customer Ooh. in marketing and how that translates she to wants to talk you guys do you guys want to hear Jordan, talk about more marketing tips and about I'm your sure ideal customer do. and all that good stuff. Or do you want to know what is the value of having an eBay store versus listing just items? Okay, we're going to come back to the marketing question. So eBay store versus just selling items. I like, this is like, I, I preach this one big and I feel very strongly about it. The store is how you create your brand. Mm -hmm. It's how you create your following. It's how you create your whole, and niche is not, niche is not, I'm gonna sell only shiny silver balloon bottoms. That's not a niche. The niche is party stuff. And yeah. the customer who buys that, what else does that customer buy? That's why, you know, in mine, it's like, it's the glass, it's the pottery, it's the collectibles. It's like the customer who comes in for any one of those items is going to have a good time looking through all my other items versus if the customer who comes in for the glass and pottery then sees like oh, i gotta go through all their clothes and the shoes and i have no interest in, like they're gonna leave so the store helps you build virtual shelves and virtual aisles for your customer to go down and the fee stuff all of that in the store that's like secondary bonus stuff. The big thing is how you can organize and make your store look professional. You can make your store look like a, a multi-million dollar big box store if you want to. Uh-oh, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly what you're saying, your buyer persona is like who that ideal client is. It's the same exact thing. So you're looking for when you're buying things, look this person, if they're interested in balloon supplies, what age are they? Where do they live? You know, what how many people do they have in their house with them? Where do they work? All of those details go into your buyer persona and then help you build out exactly what you're going to be putting on the shelves in your stores, how you communicate with them, how you write up the listing description, your keywords, how you present your store, all of your imagery, all of that's consistent. Yeah, what is their income level? Because that's going to make a difference of where they're going to be and what maybe you want a discount store. There's some pretty big discount you stores. Make a that, lot of money on discount yeah, store. Lower margin, more quantity. Yep. That's not my business model, but you know, some people make that. You have to decide what you want your brand to be. And yes, you are a brand. If you're doing this with any amount of seriousness and it's not just a hobby or something fun, you are a brand and you need to develop your brand if you want to grow and build and have people come back for more. Okay, next question. I sold a picture frame for $19. I overwrapped, buyer sent a photo, and I and said it had a fracture. I didn't see anything. I refunded $10. Was this the right move? Is the buyer always right? So the, the saying that the buyer is always right does not mean that the buyer is actually always right. It doesn't mean that the buyer is always telling the truth. That saying comes from, you don't wanna argue with your customer. Right. Because it's gonna get nowhere. So the saying that the buyer is always right simply means you need to look at how to best mitigate the circumstances of whatever they're throwing your way without putting them on the defensive. So, Buyer says the item arrived broken. You know what the first thing I say is? I say, I am so sorry that happened, or I am so sorry the item didn't arrive to your expectations. Let's see how we can make this right. I put the ball in their court. Good. Find out what they want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want nothing except to just tell you it's, you know, not right. what they thought it was. And then just like let it go. Yep. Sometimes they want a refund. Sometimes they want to return it. Some, you know, you got to ask the buyer what they want. A partial refund isn't always going to make everyone happy. Yeah. And they have to agree to it in order to make that the set way to go. Yeah, um, I, I would never send a partial refund without communicating with the buyer first. And what I usually do is I assess 
the item that I just sent, okay? If it's, like, let's say I send a big TV, okay? Um, if they get it and they say, you know, it's, it's not working, then, you know, I assess, okay, can they take it to a repair shop, you know, and I'll offer to give them a partial refund for repairs. Or if it arrives smashed, you know, then I know I need to deal with UPS or whoever, or whoever took or whatever. In fact, I just had this um, yesterday. I sold a, a vintage um, Pioneer um, stereo deck and I shipped it to Hawaii <laughs> and I wrapped the crap out of it. I mean, made sure it packed, was packed really well, but Hawaii, right? And so it arrived and it had some dings in the corner and the buyer sent me photos of the dings and said, hey man, you know, this, this arrived here. And okay, so that's a $230 sale for me. I didn't want to just refund them 230 bucks. Secondarily, I don't want them to ship it back from Hawaii. I don't want to pay that shipping, that's crazy. So uh, this is the way I phrase it, and I have never, ever had a negative response from a buyer phrasing it this way. I say, um, oh, I'm so sorry that happened, you know, um, I thought it was packed well, whatever. I want to make this right with you. How about a, uh, I'm a partial refund, maybe 50 bucks, okay? And I'll come up with a number that is generous to the buyer, but doesn't mean that I'm losing all my money either, okay? In this case, it was a, it was a stereo deck that I paid five bucks for, okay? Sold it for 200, okay? Offered the guy, but the phrase, I want to make this right with you, puts yeah. this in the buyer's court. Yeah. And then they're the ones that have to say, oh, he really does care about me, okay? He's not arguing with me. He's not saying, look, I packed it right. I put pool noodles around yeah. it, you know? Most people want to be heard. They do. Most right. people just want to be yep. heard. And, and you and take it, responsibility. And it comes to that. They want to know that they matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, Good. look at like, we are in a, a broken world and I know we're like, maybe Diane, I mean, this might be a good point for me to introduce you young lady. Oh yeah. You know? Get somebody but else on camera. We have a lot of hurting people out there. We have a lot of people who are buying something emotional and, you know, and then sometimes communicating through an eBay message might be the only thing that they have with the world. So I want to just put out there, stop thinking that every customer is out to scam you or do you Not wrong true. or, you know, have some compassion, empathy, and put yourself in their shoes and assume that they are speaking the truth first, yep. unless you have facts that say otherwise. I mean, yes, there's scammers out there. Like, oh, for it's sure. all happened to all of us. Yeah, and if you get scammed, put them on your blocked bidder list. Yeah, but don't assume list. that that's the case for every buyer that has an issue. Just because you think you packaged it great, stuff happens. Stuff happens. It, you should see the package. Oh my gosh. I just had to open a, a, a insurance case on this item. That box was so smashed. And the customer actually says, she says, I can't believe it's not more broken than it is. She said, like, you did the packaging so good, but stuff is going to happen. It's going to get squishy pooed and you just got to deal with it. But here's the other thing. So you said that thing cost you $5, right? Yep. Ultimate. Yep. You know what you're out? If in fact everything goes wrong, if in fact you have to refund the customer, you know what you're really out? Five bucks. You're out five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And a little bit of time. Yeah. And that that's the difference between taking this personally and saying mm -hmm. here's the business here's the business numbers does it suck to lose a 200 dollars profit yeah it sure sucks. it does but at the end of the day if you just look at black and white it's five dollars that you're really out and it's no big deal and you can make that up on the next one sure or you can spend hours lamenting about it posting on every facebook group how awful is that thunder? That's thunder. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, woo. Right. Yeah. You that can you can spend hours posting about it. You can but cry yeah. and whine and beat yourself up. And, and tell lose yourself, that time that you could have listed another $250 item. Exactly. And in yeah. the end, you know, I I made the customer happy, gave him a little bit of a refund. I ended up with a $150 profit, which isn't bad Yeah, on five bucks. And he gave me a great feedback. And review. I saw somebody just said, you're not just out the $5, you're out the time. And of course uh, there's that's time. That's true. Yes, of course there's time. But you can be out a lot more time and cost by not Ooh, moving on. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Move on as quickly that's as you can. Thing. Resolve it and move on as quickly as you can so you can go list more items. And just acceptance that that is a part of this business. Yep. 
factor in happen. a percentage. It used to be like back when I was working at the 7-Eleven, um, and this was, I was 16 years old. It was a long time ago. Um, but that's where I learned about things like shrinkage and the costs that go into running a retail business. And because it was my future in-laws that owned the store. And I was like, I dug into that stuff. You know, it was very interesting to me. It was 5%. 5% of the sales per year were going to be assumed to walk out that door and never be paid for. And now we, we're in the virtual store world and you're still going to have 5 to 10% is going to be shrinkage. Absolutely. Stuff yep. that, you know, a scammer gets away with yep. or you have to refund. And you just need to factor that into your numbers. Just yeah. Factor I, it in. I just saw a comment on there. Somebody said, uh, it seems like there's an issue with insurance because buyers are now being forced to take the item to the post office instead of sellers. I know why that is now. I know why that is too. I know why that is. <laughs> you know why? Go ahead. <laughs> it's because when you open the claim, you are only allowed to give them one picture as evidence. So of course they can't make a decision on one picture. So now, and I am assuming that this is because too many people took advantage of insurance claims and now the post office is trying to mitigate their shrinkage and have somebody actually bring that item in for inspection. Yeah. It makes sense. It sucks. It, it I does get suck, it. but there's nothing else you can do with it. I had I raised a royal stink with the post office because I shipped a four pack of salsa and it arrived with two of the jars smashed. And so the package had shards of glass and it's dripping salsa. And I'm like, you want me to tell the buyer to take that to the post office? And they said, well, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, but that's, that's the game. It's again, it's their sandbox. Yeah. And you know? you'll get nice customers. This oh, is yeah. it's the communication, you guys, with your customer when these things. So remember, customer service is is not proven when everything goes right. Mm -hmm. Good customer service is proven when something goes wrong. Right. So if you are understanding with your customer, do the apology first. That says, I hear Take you. Responsibility. I'm sorry. Sorry that happened. And let them know, I'm going to open an insurance claim with the post office. Here is what they are going to require. They are going to ask that you bring the item and the packaging down to, to your local post office for inspection. They'll be in touch with you. Please hold on to everything. As soon as we get this taken care of, you will get a full refund. Their motivation is that full refund. So it's important that you don't send the money. I used to say once they send you the photos and everything, then oh. yeah. Yeah, I but used to refund them right away. That right. doesn't do it anymore. They right. have to hold on to that item and be willing to take it to the post office. So just, and you're, not every customer is going to be happy about this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be. I mean, I get it. I, that would be such a hassle Especially for me. Especially if it's dripping salsa. Yeah. And if the customer <laughs> is then at that point, like, there's no way I'm doing that, then you do what's best for your business, which is probably going to be... Okay, I understand. Once they have proven to you that it in in fact did in fact happen, refund them. Yeah, move Just on. Just refund them. Move on. Yeah, and then work with the customers who are willing to take it down for inspection. Yeah. Yep. Does the buyer need to open the claim with USPS or the seller? Now, here's what's interesting: the buyer can. Yeah, they can. And I think that's going to be my new route: is asking them. Yeah, that's that's the way I open going. that claim themselves because yep. I just discovered because I hadn't done one for a long time and now just doing that one the other day mm -hmm. they absolutely can open the claim themselves which then puts the power like in their hands right. of getting that refund because right. they're going to get their refund right from the post office so that could be a really good way to handle it too sure. yeah um how do I get over my addiction to items that just don't sell I know they don't sell but I cannot just redonate them your addiction to items that don't sell so yeah, that's a that's, really general... <laughs> it really is. I, I, I think that's a mindset issue because yeah. it sounds like you're getting married to your inventory and you want to validate your choice of items that you source. And that's an yeah. easy place to get to. And the way to get out of that is to remember that you have a business. You know, you're not just having a hobby that makes you look like a smart person because I bought these cute little dolls. And so I know they're going to sell, doggone it. And they've been in my store for seven years and they haven't sold yet. <laughs> Get over it. 
You've got a business and your business needs cash flow. Your business doesn't need inventory that sits for seven years, okay? And so if you're not, if you're not finding profitable items for your business, then there's some things that you need to change. So how quickly should your inventory sit? Oh, See, and that's, that's like that's a, a very, question. very open. So it's going to depend. There are long tail items. There are short tail items. Mm -hmm. There are items and I think that it's will healthy to have a mixture of. You both. need a mixture of both. You really do. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if if you have a lot of stuff that's just sitting and sitting, it may be that you're sourcing too much long tail stuff versus mixing it up or putting the stuff in there that draws people to that other stuff so they can find it too. Um, and those are the type of questions are really good over in the groups because then you can show us some pictures and we can talk and we can have a longer discussion. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've joined the niche to profit group and the sorcerer, sorcerers, <laughs> sorcerers, <laughs> sorcerers, apprentice group. Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I want to know how you came up with that name. Let's, oh, let's just, kind of wrap it up with that. It came to me in a flash. I was like, it, like Jim had asked me to start teaching, you know, yeah. I'm like, okay, what do I do? Well, I should probably have a Facebook group, should have a YouTube channel, blah, 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 and everything. And I'm like, what am I going to call it? And I said, well, what do I like to do? I like to go sourcing, sourcing. source, and that just, uh, the sources apprentice just hit me. It was a word from God. There, you go. <laughs> there we go it's a word from god i feel like there's a whole play on that with like the gaming community that you're advertising oh, dude to, like... yeah oh, heck yeah on. that's cool yeah, the marketing girl over here marketing girl is all over it <laughs> did you put your information into how they can contact you if anybody needs help like, yeah you need to do that. instagram set up someone or... put my link um, back in the chat, but I will go put it again. Yeah, yeah, why not? Do it. So Jordan's going to put that in, in there. So, um, I, I, we're going to get back to the conference. Um, we're going to be here through Wednesday. I'm going to be here through Thursday. When do you go home? We're going home Thursday. Thursday. Yep. Yeah, I think everybody's pretty yep. go home. We're going to go out looking for gators and <laughs> um, big bugs. And actually, they find us. Those, they really those do. big bugs find yeah. us. Yeah. Hopefully, the gators don't find us. No, well, yeah, there is that. Yeah. I want to see a gator, though. I, I like to see know. one from a distance. Jordan, why, why are you looking at me up? like that? <laughs> because whatever you see, I also have to see. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, You're you know freaking what? Your daughter. I watch watch the hails and, and get swamped, so I know how to handle alligators now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Good. Then I'll run faster than you away. Right. And that was and that was a little sarcasm on don't just watch a YouTube channel and think that oh. They sell that, so I can sell that. See how I tied that in there? That's good. Um, make sure you are your own person. Make sure you're developing your own unique yep. brand yep. and product lines and all of that stuff. Like this can be so, so fun developing all of that and building on that and, you know, leaving stuff behind at the store because once you've really zeroed in on that, you don't have to buy everything that you think is going to make you money. Yep. Because in essence, it probably won't. Right. So, you got any last wise words to uh, end with? Oh, man. You know what? Have fun with your business. I mean, yeah, it is a business. And yes, you want to, number one, be profitable. But number two, it should be fun. You should enjoy it. You know, Marie Kondo, your business. If it does not bring you joy, dump it. Okay. See, and he doesn't really <laughs> even listen to me. But you know how we wrap up this show I'm every sorry, single I wasn't week? Listening. What? <laughs> first i want to say thank you everyone for being here thank yes. you to my moderators make sure you go check out many of them have channels as well and uh this is how we end it every week do it go be profitable and make it fun yes <laughs> bye everyone